it's possibly not for me to tell lecturers what they need to do, but finding good teaching material is very, very important. If that may be material they have uh, put together over a number of years and honed, or it might be a textbook. But the crux of a relationship between a lecturer and student is good teaching material. Besides the lecture and the availability of that lecture, there is much more that a student needs and a lecturer needs to provide. In particular with engineering and mathematics, it's very important that students have a source of worked examples. They can see how examples are worked, the formulae that are used, and the units that are used. It's important that they can see a lot of these for themselves, and then to have available a number of extra questions for them to try for themselves with the answers given. So that's quite a lot of extra material that a lecturer needs to provide. If they can provide some multiple choice questions as well, so much the better. Then it's our job as lecturers to guide the pace of learning. We should always be available. We should also be approachable for help. However, I don't think that we should mollycoddle students. If they ask a question, it's good to ask a question back to make them think and to hopefully uh, end up with discovering the answer for themselves. Thinking is rather important for engineers. When they pass their exams and get their qualifications, that's just the start of producing an engineer. They will need practical experience. They will need to somehow develop soft skills, decision making, leadership, work ethic, creative thinking, communication skills, so important in engineers. However, as lecturers, we can do only a limited amount because of the time available we have. It's good in a lecture to put out a question, for students to think about it, come back with different answers and discuss. However, most lecturers will tell you there's just not enough time to do that. But nevertheless, I think we should have in the back of our minds that we want to try to encourage students to think because engineers are creative and clever people. I suppose initially algebra is thought to be a problem in engineering, solving simple equations, quadratic equations, simultaneous equations are needed in engineering. And there are a plethora of equations that need transposing. This is algebra in action. Civil engineers use algebra to design and analyze load bearing structures like bridges. Mechanical engineers use algebra to design and analyze suspension systems. Electrical engineers use algebra to design and analyze electrical circuits. Algebra may not have been a favorite subject at school, but now it will not be a problem because we're using it in a practical way. Trigonometry has often been a problem for students, but there are so many uses of trigonometry in engineering. It's used in navigation, in optics, in medical imaging with CAT scans, in architecture, in astronomy, and so much more. A surveyor might want to calculate the height of a tall building, a hundred meters away, say. If he has an instrument called a theodolite, then he can find the angle of elevation and using trigonometry, calculate the height of the building. Someone who is designing roof trusses and spans, it's all about triangles. So a knowledge of trigonometry is needed. Trigonometry is not difficult when a practical situation is explained 
and students usually manage. Calculus is an area that is a higher skill, but engineers often have to analyze quantities that are varying. Although calculus is a difficult topic initially, it becomes an application of algebra. Calculus is needed to find the stresses in loaded beams, the temperature of an industrial chemical, the current in an electrical circuit, the torque on a turbine blade. These are all applications in engineering of calculus. If I was a manufacturer, manufacturing rectangular boxes, either in cardboard or metal, given a particular cross-sectional area of material, I would need calculus to determine the maximum volume that I could produce from that material. And calculus is needed for that. Calculus is needed to find areas and volumes and centroids and second moments of areas. All those are used in engineering. And after that, calculus provides the basis for higher level studies in differential equations, Laplace transforms and Fourier series. So what I'm saying is once you learn algebra and trigonometry, you build on it bit by bit. So we can't forget it, but these then become more straightforward. So they may initially be thought of as difficult topics that students manage as soon as you put it into a practical context. If a textbook is being used, it's really helpful if there is a website easily available where they can pick up lots of information about the book. For example, I mentioned earlier about practice questions and having answers, but sometimes students get stuck. So if all of the solutions to those extra problems that were in the textbook were on the website, how helpful would that be for students? Also in a textbook, if there were some revision tests without answers or solutions, if they were available on the website, especially and only for lecturers to access, that I'm sure would also be very helpful because lecturers could set those revision tests um, for students to do, but they wouldn't have answers. So help for the lecturers. Also, if all the diagrams in a textbook were put on PowerPoint images that could be used in class, that would also be a very helpful extra for lecturers to have. Lists of formulae are also important for students because there are a whole load of formulae involved in engineering. And in engineering examinations, normally uh, formula sheets are allowed. So getting used to formula sheets will be very useful. Having multiple choice questions online also will be an extra and a bit of fun perhaps. And also short biographies of famous engineers and scientists that are involved within the studies of the mathematics. For example, knowing a little bit about Sir Isaac Newton or Pythagoras or Leibniz or Poisson or Fourier or Laplace, just a little bit of background could make it just a little bit more interesting for the student. I realize you can get this on Google anyway, but if it's there on the website, there is interest there in the background to the mathematics. The three mathematics books that are being published this month are basic engineering mathematics, engineering mathematics, and higher engineering mathematics. The basic engineering mathematics would be for BTEC engineering studies. The engineering mathematics would be for higher engineering studies, HNC, higher national diploma, and the higher engineering mathematics book would be for degree courses.
in engineering. And all three of those books have those ancillaries that I was talking about just now. That is full answers and solutions to all of the further problems, help for lecturers with the revision test solutions, PowerPoint presentations for every diagram, lists of formulae, multiple choice questions, and short biographies of famous engineers and scientists.